you know, say when Columbus came here. Columbus never came to this land we call the United States of America. He's in the Caribbean, he's Haiti, Jamaica, Cuba, Puerto Rico, things like this. He never comes to this land. So we'll do what a lot of history will do. Well, why African American History Month? Why Black History Month was created? Mm-hmm. Um, what was the Can purpose? Of- I don't want. I don't want. I want for people to come to the actual. Yeah, you know, sure, sure. Do, you know, see, sure. I, I, I do it. I do it. Like access because I saw that. You know, that's. But I, 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 this was a long time ago. But I did see Morgan Freeman when he was saying African or Black History Month. Yeah, I, saw that. I, have that, I actually have that clip in the in the in the, uh, in the presentation. So what I, you know, and, and and I understand his point. You yeah, know, he but, doesn't understand history. So that's the problem. Okay, he says I don't want a Black History Month. He doesn't know there's a Jewish there's a Jewish History Month. See, other ethnic groups have monthly cultural celebrations. And they all, and most of, because I studied the history of theirs, and most of them start after 1976. 1976 is when Negro History Week becomes Black History Month. See, they they cherish what they created. We run away from what we created, and other people imitated us. So, you know, I like Morgan Freeman as an actor. Hopefully, he's learned the truth since that video came out. That was like 2006, Mike Wallace interview, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And he says, I don't want a Black History Month. He said, Black History is American history. Yeah, it's true that our history is part of this country. Their history is part of ours, because we were here before them. Okay, but but uh, African American History Month is a monthly cultural celebration. Okay, like Women's History Month. Okay, that's a celebration. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, uh, did you know the National Basketball Association? They celebrate. Uh, there's a Hispanic uh, History Month. Okay, mm-hmm. they celebrate that. It's a celebration that people have. Just what like, should we do? Go ahead. Well, I mean, mm-hmm. you know, what 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 should we do during this month? Because I think that. You know, it has gotten so commercialized. It's gotten, you know, and, and it's, mm-hmm. it's, it's this, okay, let me take this opportunity to be able to highlight the same people that we highlight right. every single year. Right. But I don't know if people, you know, actually do anything on their own during Black History Month. Well, what is your recommendation on what we should do? Well, first of all, I think people should uh, take this month and really celebrate our history, celebrate who we are, study our history. You know, you should study it year round, but if you don't study it year round, this is definitely the month to do it. So hopefully you develop the habit right. of reading books about our history year round. All because cultures should. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. All culture all culture all cultures should, number one. Uh should study uh, study our history because the because the history of our people, where well, the history of this country starts with African people, number one. Number two, African people go all the way around the world. Uh but the, but the other thing is what you do for yourself, what you do to yourself and what you allow other people to do to you and get away with. It's based upon what you think about yourself. What you think about yourself is based upon what you've been taught about yourself. What you've been taught about yourself is based, based upon anything you've read, heard, and seen about yourself. So your history and culture gives you your values, your interests, and your principles. Gives you your foundation. It, it, it impacts your self-esteem as well as your racial esteem. It impacts how you perceive yourself, but also how you see your people as a group. You have high racial esteem or low racial esteem. And then this impacts your economic empowerment and your political empowerment as well. A lot, a lot of the apathy that we deal with in our community is people have low self-worth either of themselves or their group of people and don't think that we are worth fighting for. Mm-hmm. They don't think we, we, we are worth having something better mm-hmm. than what's given to us because of the misinformation we're being fed, uh, fed, to, fed to us through the media. Mm-hmm. Okay, so th- this is a time and, and you know, um, one, one of the things about this time of year is that, uh, well, unfortunately, what happens is we bring out the same 15 to 20 sanitized Negroes each year and recycle them them. because these are people who like are acceptable oftentimes to white people, right? Right, right. right, So we're not dealing with Tucson Low Overture, we're not not talking about the Haitian Revolution, right? All right. Or we're not dealing with Nat Turner, okay, the Nat Turner Rebellion in 1831 in Virginia, okay, which almost ended slavery in the state of Virginia. And shook America to its core. So it, it becomes it becomes commercialized. It, com- it becomes co-opted like Dr. King Day, mm-hmm. okay? Where you have uh, white corporations. I still don't understand that, okay? <laughs> because Dr. King was against the exploitation of people by white corporations, okay? <laughs> well, <laughs> So it's the same reason why Trump decided to get on national television and say all those things to his base. You gotta, you know, appease the base. Right. You gotta, so, you gotta make everybody, you know, think you, you know, you're doing something. Right. So, so, so the presentation I do is is different than a lot of um, Black History Month presentations because a lot of them don't deal with the origins of the celebration, why it was created, what we need to do to make it relevant for the day and the future, and then uh, you know, I deal with dispelling uh, uh, myths about our history as well, which is are extremely important. Um, and one of them is dealing with, you know, like John Hanson being president, things like this. I was going to try to tackle 
uh, the fake Willie Lynch letter 1712, and I don't have enough time. I have a video on YouTube about that. People can check that out. They can ask me about it, but I don't have enough time, you know, because when I go into it, I've actually done a couple presentations on it. Uh, then the second day, so Saturday is 2 p.m. to 6 p.m., 71 Oakman Avenue. And we have, you can go to AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. We have a flyer there, AfricanHistoryNetwork.com. You can also call us 313-462-0003, 313-462-0003. And then Sunday, February 4th, 1 p.m. to 4 p.m., we'll do it the light of ancient Egypt awakens the African mind with the, with the connection between ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt, and the Africans known as the Moors, who go into Europe, and the 800-year occupation of Europe, saves Europe, brings Europe out of the dark ages, this sets up Christopher Columbus to set sail on his four voyages, uh, August, uh, you know, August 2nd, 1492, and then August 3rd, 1492, I should say. And then, uh, and so we deal with a, a lot of history there. We deal with the origins of Freemasonry and things like this. It's all coming out of ancient Kemet and what the Moors taken to Europe. They took the light from, they, they took the light from ancient Africa into the dark continent. Europe was the dark continent continent because Europe was in the dark age. Mm -hmm. Africa was not the dark continent. Europe was the dark continent, right? So we deal with it. We deal with that um, on the second day. Also. So, so okay, mm -hmm. so Black History Month, right? Mm -hmm. So this is my challenge to everybody. This is going to be my challenge as well. Sure. Uh, we're going to take the, you know, Michael M. Hotep challenge <laughs> for Black History Month. So other than the same, you know, Sanitary Negro, <laughs> oh, uh, you know, you know, sanitized, sanitized Negro. You know, sanitized yeah. Negro so, yeah. you know, who should we be reading about? What you know, what 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 book should we be reading? Who should we be talking? You know, I mean, who should we be studying during this time? Well, uh, uh, not turning who up. Oh, well, and oftentimes it's not about personalities. Mm -hmm. It's about groups of people. It's about periods of time. So one good book is uh, the destruction of black civilization mm -hmm. by Dr. Chancellor Williams. The Destruction of Black Civilization by Dr. Chancellor Williams. Another one um, is the, um, the book that uh, Dr. Claude Anderson's latest book, uh, The Black History Reader, 101 um, Questions You Never Thought to Ask. I think it's called The Black History Reader, the one, 101 Questions You Never Thought to Ask. Um, let's see. Another good one. Oh, excellent one. My friend, Dr. David M. Hotel, the book, The First Americans Were Africans, documented evidence, because I cite some of his work in, in, my, in my presentation. Can you tell me what M. Hotel means? M. Hotel means he who comes in peace. Ghana is an uh, ancient Kemetic term. M. Hotel is one of the greatest people who ever lived in human history. So uh, the first Americans were Africans, documented evidence. He has 713 footnotes. You'll see, you know, I have a, uh, some of his, I cite some of his work in my, in my presentation. So uh, those are some good books to get people started. Uh, Before the Mayflower by Lerone Bennett Jr. is a good one. You can deal with different periods of time uh, of history.